Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel in which I talk about, well, whatever I want to talk about lately. And today's video is going to be on a touchy subject. Now I want to state this first and foremost. I, for about 30 years, a little bit, a little bit under, but for about 30 years of my life was a very religious, devout, um, practicing Mormon or a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, however they want to be called and said, whatever. <laughs> so that was what I was believing for a long time. Uh, that meant that I believed in Jesus Christ, it meant that I believed in God, and it meant that I believed in salvation of some kind in the next life by living very strictly to the laws and basically not sinning was how it was set up. And I really believed it for a really long time. And that's why today's video is going to be a little difficult. So we're going to see how this goes. <laughs> so why did I title this video The Problem with Religion? I just have to explain very plainly. I have no problems with people believing in Jesus Christ. I have no problems with people believing in a God. That's completely okay. And as long as you are being a good and decent person and you are only living way in the way that you want to live and are not forcing other people to live the way that you live, I see no problems with it. It is perfectly fine and acceptable for you to worship the God that you choose to worship, for you to believe and practice the things that you believe and practice. But when it becomes a problem is when it's being forced onto other people to practice and believe in the same way for the sake of their quote unquote salvation. You do not get to dictate another's salvation. And that's where it becomes the problem with religion. Now this video is going to get so many li dislikes and it's going to have so many comments angry at me, but I just have to, I have to say it. I have to do this video. And it's probably because it will allow me to actually be able to start to move forward more in healing of myself because I spent so much of my life trying to live that perfect way that you're supposed to live for the sake of your salvation, and I got nothing. Instead, I was belittled, berated, treated as if I was nothing but scum and worthless, and being literally just messed with to a point that I have been so severely broken that I can't build relationships like a normal person anymore. It's basically impossible for me to connect with people because all I remember is all the trauma that I had while I was still very active and trying to remain worthy in a church that at the end of the day was more than okay with abandoning me and treating me as if I was less than I am. And that is the main problem. Now, I want to state this and I want this to be kind of as plain as clear as I can make it be. In my church, there is a lot of talk of you being of worth, you having worth, you being worthy, etc, etc. It is still a beautiful thing and I still do love the song, I am a child of God, in which it builds up your worth even more. While it's not exactly perfect and the church does have fatal flaws, especially in different leaders of the church throughout its past and even currently, it is not inherently a terrible religion. A lot of the people who do practice Mormonism or who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints tend to be very kind, caring people. They tend to look for opportunities to serve each other and to help in their neighborhoods and communities, making sure that other people are provided for. They're typically the ones that when they move into the neighborhood, they come by with a plate of cookies and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. Usually it ends up leading to, can I invite you to come over to my house for dinner? And then you end up getting met with the missionaries, but it's not inherently out of malice or evil. They are doing it because we are told so much in the church that you need to do these things for the sake of other salvations. 
And that's the most important thing to me that really kind of bothers me about it, though. You see, it's dictating how somebody can be saved. It reminds me a lot of pertaining to the story of the guy in a flood and he prays to God and he's begging God, please save me, please save me. And God sends him a boat. And the guys are like, come on, get in the boat, get in the boat, We're, we'll take you to safety. And he's just like, no, no, God will save me. And so they leave and then a helicopter comes by and he says, no, no, God will save me. And then he drowns. <laughs> And when he gets to heaven, he looks at God and he goes, why didn't you save me? And God goes, I sent people to save you, but you did not choose to be saved. But the irony is, is that those scenarios of salvation, those scenarios of being saved, was that those people still were like, okay, well, if you don't want this, then that is for you to choose. And he still went to heaven. He still got to meet God. So that story is not the best analogy for the type of quote unquote saving that is claimed to be done. Now, I just feel like this needs to be said. I don't think you really need to worry that much about your salvation in the next life. We have no clue what the gods are really like or if there are even gods to begin with. But even if there are gods, I'm, I'm going to be personally honest, I don't think that they're inherently all good or all loving as we claim them to be. And if they are all good and all loving, then they cannot be all powerful. And yet, if they're all powerful, then they cannot be all good or all loving. Do you see where I'm getting at? Let me back it up here for a moment because I feel like it's important for us to kind of address these three things that people claim God as being. So what is God? He is all powerful, all loving, all knowing, and all good. That's not possible. A God cannot do that. And while we argue and have all this stuff set up, let's historically look at all the different gods that have existed throughout history. Ra, Shiva, Odin, and many other gods throughout history are none of those. They either are all powerful and thus have the power to smite you and to destroy things and to cause pestilence and diseases, but that doesn't make them all good. They tend to make terrible and serious mistakes. They tend to be selfish, greedy, and prideful. And a lot of times they also tend to be very narcissistic and wanting to be the only god that you worship and that you bow down to. On top of that, they are not all loving, tending to want to only love one of their children. Pertaining to Odin, <laughs> that is exactly the case. Even with Zeus, that was the case. None of these gods really were all loving. They had somebody who they favored over the others, and that includes humanity. So the thing is, is that it just bothers me as to how in the world the Christian God is now all of a sudden classified as all of these things when it just is not possible. Historically throughout the stories pertaining to the God that leads up to Jesus Christ or Jehovah or so, so on and so forth pertaining to the Christians, he was not a good God at all. In fact, he was very narcissistic and only wanted to be the one God that anybody worshipped. But he admits to other gods existing along with him and that he is not the only God. But he just wants to be the only one that's worshipped and none of the other gods getting any attention. Cool. Slow your roll down there, bro. The thing is, is that when you realize that that's how he is, I don't really want to worship that. Now, people argue that, well, he changed when he became Jesus Christ, or if you're like me in the Mormon church, then you're just thinking, well, he sent his son and that was what changed him and made him realize how much he loved us. Well, then he has to sacrifice something. So let's think about the laws of exchange. 
The laws of nature are ones that you can never go against. We know this for a fact. You can't inherently go against gravity, but you can utilize gravity as a way for you to traverse. The same can be said as to certain types of actions. At the end of the day, the laws of nature dictate things to be the way that they have to be. You have to eat. You have to drink water. You have to have a safe place to live. We cannot actually go against that. If we do not have any of these, at some point or another, you can either end up severely ill or you can end up dead. One of the two. And the fact of the matter is, is that I, along with many other Christians, know that even gods can't go against the laws of nature, which basically means that God can't go against the laws of nature. So if he gives up all of his power for the sake of being all loving, then he doesn't have any power to actually dictate whether or not we gain salvation. And he just becomes a being who observes us. And yet, if he is all-powerful, then he has dictated and removed his capability of being all-loving. And thus, he has no love for any of us, and we have no value in his eyes whatsoever. Now, a lot of you are going to also comment how that is terrible and how wrong that is. Excuse me, my nose is itchy and my neighbor's dog is barking. But it's not okay for us to continue to be set up in such a way. Religion dictates and tells you multiple times that there has to be this being that is so much higher than us, that is so much better than us, that they're the only way that you can ever gain salvation. And I am just here to say that that is completely false. That cannot inherently be the only truth. Because I feel like we get our salvation. Now, again, I, I don't care what religion you worship or practice. If you are a good person who actually genuinely cares about other people, who sees things in a different way from what your religious pastor, preacher, teacher, whatever they're called, tells you every Sunday, if you don't believe everything that they say and instead are being fundamentally listening to other people, what they've experienced, their hardships, their trials, and are being understanding and sympathetic towards what they're going through, you are okay. You can continue to worship and believe that church all you want. You can believe in that God and believe in him in the way that you want him to be. That is perfectly fine and acceptable and I see nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I mean, heck, I have statues of Artemis, Athena, Ra, Odin, Thor, Freya, many other gods throughout my apartment, as well as pictures of Jesus Christ, because I still believe that there is something more than us, but I don't know what it is, and I don't want to just worship it blindly. I'm tired of doing that. I, I want to be able to just live my life trying to help in the best ways that I can. Like, I'm making sure that I continue to volunteer, going out and serving other people. I'm also trying to make sure that I'm paying attention to those who are suffering. I make sure to pay back where I can. There's programs at grocery stores in which you can pay a bit extra and it pays for other families' foods. So in that way, they don't have to worry about having enough money for their groceries. I keep trying to do that, and that's because I want to do that. It's not because a God is telling me that if I don't choose to do this, then I'm screwed. It's because I want to make sure that other people have salvation. I think the hardest thing is that religion really kind of wants to control us to a certain extent. The more that you could convince people to believe in something and to even do certain things for the sake of that God or that religion, the more control you start to have over people, the more you can monopol monopolize them and take away their money because, hey, if you don't pay your tithing, then you can't reach the salvation of your God. And I don't think that's okay. Look, it's okay to admit when your church is struggling and you need that little bit of extra finance, so financial help to make things a little bit better for other people in the ward and maybe even outside in the community that the church is reaching out to. That's perfectly fine. But 
what really sucks is when it's not about that and it is solely just about making more money. I think if we can start calling out religions more on their BS and just being like, you are not doing this for the sake of others or for anybody's salvation but your own, then the more that we can actually start to look at each other and be like, I love you as a human being because we are all human at the end of the day. We are all messed up and have terrible things. We've all done stupid things. But the one thing that we can do and the one thing that is something that I hope we can continue to do is to just try to serve each other, to love one another and to be there for each other. And right now, we need that more than any other time in humanity. Because right now, things are shifting, our society is collapsing, and it's just one of those times where we have to strive to be there for each other. May we continue to find hope wherever we can. If you need to still believe in the gods, please continue to do so. Just don't dictate it over other people's lives. Their salvation will come the way that it's supposed to come. Worry about yourself. Take care of yourself and your needs. And hey, if there is a God, he'll come. If there's not, don't worry about it. So that's all I wanted to say. Hope that you guys have a good rest of the day. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.